The Second Italian War of Independence, also called the Franco-Austrian War, Austro-Sardinian War or Italian War of 1859 French, Campagne d'Italie, was fought by the French Empire and the Kingdom of Sardinia against the Austrian Empire in 1859 and played a crucial part in the process of Italian unification. Background the Piedmontese, following their defeat by Austria in the First Italian War of Independence, recognized their need for allies. This led Camillo Benso, Conte di Cavour, the Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Piedmont Sardinia, to attempt to establish relations with other European powers, partially through Piedmont's participation in the Crimean War. In the peace conference at Paris following the Crimean War, Cavour attempted to bring attention to efforts for Italian unification. He found Britain and France to be sympathetic, but entirely unwilling to go against Austrian wishes, as any movement towards Italian independence would necessarily threaten Austria's territory of Lombardy Venetia. Private talks between Napoleon III and Cavour after the conference identified Napoleon as the most likely, albeit still uncommitted, candidate for aiding Italy. On 14 January 1858, Felice Orsini, an Italian, led an attempt on Napoleon III's life. This assassination attempt brought widespread sympathy for the Italian unification effort, and had a profound effect on Napoleon himself, who now was determined to help Piedmont against Austria in order to defuse the wider revolutionary activities that the governments inside Italy might allow to happen in the future. After a covert meeting at Plumbières, Napoleon III and Cavour signed a secret treaty of alliance against Austria, France would help Sardinia Piedmont to fight against Austria if attacked, and Sardinia Piedmont would then give Nice and Savoy to France in return. This secret alliance served both countries, it helped with the Sardinian Piedmontese plan of unification of the Italian peninsula under the House of Savoy, and weakened Austria, a fiery adversary of Napoleon III's French Empire. Cavour, being unable to get the French help unless the Austrians attacked first, provoked Vienna with a series of military maneuvers close to the border. Austria issued an ultimatum on 23 April 1859, demanding the complete demobilization of the Sardinian army, and when it was not heeded, Austria started a war with Sardinia the 29th of April, thus drawing France into the conflict. Forces the French army for the Italian campaign had 170,000 soldiers, 2,000 horsemen and 312 guns, half of the whole French army. The army was under the command of Napoleon III, divided into five corps, the first corps, led by Achille Baraghi d. Hilliers, the second corps, led by Patrice McMahon, the third corps, led by François Certain Can Robert, the fourth corps, led by Adolphe Neal, and the fifth corps, led by Prince Napoleon. The Imperial Guard was commanded by Auguste Regno de Saint-Jean d. Angeli. The Sardinian army had about 70,000 soldiers, 4,000 horsemen and 90 guns. It was divided into five divisions, led by Castelbrugo, Manfredo Fanti, Giovanni Durando, Enrico Cialdini, and Domenico Cucchiari. Two volunteer formations, the Cacciatori della Alpi and the Cacciatori degli Apennini, were also present. The commander-in-chief was Victor Emmanuel II of Savoy, supported by Alfonso Ferrero La Marmora. The Austrian army fielded more men, it was composed of 220,000 soldiers, 824 guns and 22,000 horsemen and was led by Field Marshal Ferenc Graf Gaiule. Operations at the declaration of war, there were no French troops in Italy, so Marshal François Certain Can Robert moved into Piedmont in the first massive military use of railways. The Austrian forces counted on a swift victory over the weaker Sardinian army before French forces could arrive in Piedmont. However, Count Gaiuli, the commander of the Austrian troops in Lombardy, was very cautious and marched around the Ticino River in no specific direction until eventually he crossed it to begin the offensive. Unfortunately for him, very heavy rains began to fall, allowing the Piedmontese to flood the rice fields in front of his advance, slowing his army's march to a crawl. 
The Austrians, under Gaiuli, eventually arrived in Vercelli, menacing Turin, but the Franco-Sardinian move to strengthen the Alessandria and Po River bridges around Casali Monferrato forced them to fall back. On 14 May Napoleon III arrived in Alessandria, taking the command of the operations. The initial clash of the war was at Montebello on 20 May, a battle between an Austrian corps under Stadion and a single division of the French I Corps under Fori. The Austrian contingent was three times as large, but the French were victorious, making Gaiuli still more cautious. In early June, Gaiuli had advanced to the rail center of Magenta, leaving his army spread out. Napoleon III attacked the Ticino head-on with part of his force while sending another large group of troops to the north to flank the Austrians. The plan worked, causing Gaiuli to retreat east to the quadrilateral fortresses in Lombardy, where he was relieved of his post as commander. Replacing Gaiuli was Emperor Franz Joseph I himself. He planned to defend the well-fortified Austrian territory behind the Mincio River. The Piedmontese French army had taken Milan and slowly marched further east to finish off Austria in this war before Prussia could get involved. The Austrians found out that the French had halted at Brescia, and decided that they should counterattack along the river Cheese. The two armies met accidentally around Solferina, precipitating a confused series of battles. A French corps held off three Austrian corps all day at Medole, keeping them from joining the larger battle around Solferina, where, after a day-long battle, the French broke through. Ludwig von Benedek with the Austrian VIII Corps was separated from the main force, defended Pozzolengo against the Piedmontese part of the opposing army. This they did successfully, but the entire Austrian army retreated after the breakthrough at Solferina, withdrawing back into the quadrilateral. At the same time, in the northern part of Lombardy, the Italian volunteers of Giuseppe Garibaldi's Hunters of the Alps defeated the Austrians at Varese and Como, and the Piedmontese French navy landed 3,000 soldiers and conquered the islands of Lusinch, Lucino, and Cress, Cerso, in Dalmatia. Peace. Fear of involvement by the German states led Napoleon to seek a way out of the war, so he signed an armistice with Austria in Villafranca. Most of Lombardy, with its capital Milan, excepting only the Austrian fortresses of Mantua and Legnago and the surrounding territory, was transferred from Austria to France, which would immediately cede these territories to Sardinia. The rulers of central Italy, who had been expelled by revolution shortly after the beginning of the war, were to be restored. This deal, made by Napoleon behind the backs of his Sardinian allies, led to great outrage in Sardinia Piedmont, and Cavour himself resigned in protest. However, the terms of Villafranca were never to come into effect. Although they were reaffirmed by the final Treaty of Zurich in November, by then the agreement had become a dead letter. The central Italian states were occupied by the Piedmontese, who showed no willingness to restore the previous rulers, and the French showed no willingness to force them to abide by the terms of the treaty. The Austrians were left to look on in frustration at the French failure to carry out the terms of the treaty. While Austria had emerged triumphant after the suppression of liberal movements in 1849, its status as a great power on the European scene was now seriously challenged, and its influence in Italy severely weakened. The next year, in 1860, with French and British approval, the central Italian states Duchy of Parma, Duchy of Modena, Grand Duchy of Tuscany and the Papal States were annexed by the Kingdom of Sardinia, and France would take its deferred reward, Savoy and Nice. The last move was vehemently opposed by Italian national hero Garibaldi, a native of Nice, and directly led to Garibaldi's expedition to Sicily, which would complete the preliminary unification of Italy. During the war, Prussia also mobilized 132,000 men in 1859 but never joined the fighting. The weaknesses laid bare during the mobilization caused the Prussian army to initiate military reforms, which were the base for its superiority and rapid victories against Austria 1866 and France 1870 over 1 leading to a united Germany under Prussian dominance. Timeline the 20th of May, French infantry and Sardinian cavalry defeat the Austrian army, which retreated, near Montebello, 26 May, Garibaldi's Hunters of the Alps confront Austrian forces led by Field Marshal Lt. Karl Baron Urban at Varese. 27 May, Hunters of the Alps defeat Urban at San Ferma, entering Como. 
the 30th of May, French and Sardinian forces defeat the Austrian army at the Battle of Palestro. The 4th of June, in the Battle of Magenta, French defeat Austrians. The 21st of June, the 24th of June, in the Battle of Solferina, Sardinians and Napoleon III of France defeat an army commanded by Emperor Franz Joseph of Austria himself in northern Italy. The battle inspires Henri Dunant to found the Red Cross. The 11th of July, Franz Joseph, faced with a revolution in Hungary, meets Napoleon III at Villafranca, where they signed an armistice. References Further reading Blumberg, Arnold. A Carefully Planned Accident, The Italian War of 1859, Susquehanna University Press, 1990. pp. 238. Basala, Carlo. The War in Italy, The Second Italian War of Independence, 1859-1860, Illustrated, Online Free Carter, Nick. Hudson, Malmesbury and Cavour, British Diplomacy and the Italian Question, February 1858 to June 1859. Historical Journal 40 No. 2, 1997, 389 to 413, in JSTOR. Kappa, Frank J. The Origins of the Italian Wars of Independence, 1992. Schneid, Frederick C. The Second War of Italian Unification 1859-61, Bloomsbury Publishing, 2012. Thayer, William Roscoe, 1911. The Life and Times of Cavour Vol. 1. Old Interpretations but Useful on Details, Vol. 1 goes to 1859, Vol. 2 online covers 1859-62.